Rise and grind gears, my name is Tetsuyumi, and welcome back to another Disgaea RPG Should You Summon. And today, we are finally going to be taking a look at the part 2 to the La Puchelle collab, because we officially, finally have Overlord Prier. You can finally summon for Overlord Prier, so we're going to go ahead and talk about her. And also, we're going to talk about Eclair. Um, but I'll be honest, guys, I, I pulled a little bit of an oopsie. Um, I figured that Eclair would kind of drop with Overlord Prier, and they would be in the same banner. Um, that was actually not the case. Eclair over here dropped uh, before Overlord Pierre, um, so you have, uh, I think, only about two more days to summon for Eclair uh, if you were going to do that. Um, so I figured I would, you know, try and get this video recorded and uh, and put out as fast as I can. So if you do at, at the end of this video want to summon for Eclair, uh, you can do that. But um, yeah, that was my bad. I, I figured they'd be dropping together, but uh, that was not the case. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start talking about these two characters, because these are, as far as I know, the last two characters from the La Puchelle collab. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get straight into it, starting with Eclair. So Eclair is a humanoid sword forte knight ally. Her stats are not looking incredibly high or anything, they're just kind of sitting right at around average. For HP, we have 120, which is pretty average. Attack, which is, is 40, which is, again, pretty average. Defense is actually 41, which is a little bit above average, uh, so we'd like to see that. For intelligence and resistance, we have 27 and 34, and speed we have 53, which is just slightly below average. For attributes, she has 50% towards everything. For resistances, she has 75% towards poison and paralysis, and 25% towards forget and sleep. Moving on to her abilities, at her leader skill, Princess's Declaration, we have attack and defense plus 16% of party humanoid characters. At any plus one, we have Princess's Prestige. When attacked, your attack and defense will increase by 30% for two turns. At any plus five, we have Lady Ladies Pertinence. Uh, number of own defense and resistance increases per female party character. And any plus seven, we have Noble Will. When the party is all humanoid, the damage done by the party will be plus 20%. So, overall, we're not looking at anything too crazy. You're getting a few decent bits of, um, just, you know, stat increases. I mean, you're getting 16% for every humanoid party member. You're getting, you know, 8% for every, uh, female party character. Uh, you're doing, if the party's all humanoid, you're getting a 20% damage increase, which is really good, but realistically, you're most likely not gonna have a full humanoid party, unless you are, you know, specifically building that. Uh, but all in all, these really aren't bad abilities at all. Uh, they're just not anything, you know, super, super special. Moving on to her skills, at level 1 we get Royal Paprika Rondo, which is an AoE attack and also giving herself a buff of defense by 15% and also granting her cover status, which I'm not really sure what that means. I can assume that maybe it's some sort of barrier or maybe it's kind of like an effect where enemies can't target her. Um, I'm not really too sure, but at the end of the day it is a buff, so it's probably going to be helpful, so I don't know. At level 200, we get Metal V-Urge, which is going to be a single target attack and also lowering the enemy's speed by 15%. And then at any plus 3, we get Blanc at Noir, which is going to be an AoE attack and also a party buff, giving every party member a defense and resistance increase of 45% for 2 turns. And finally, moving down to our magic spells, we just get a whole crap load of ally buffs, giving us speed, defense, and resistance. I've been thinking it over for a little bit, and I'll be honest, I'm still a little bit confused about where to put Eclair in the tier list. For now, I went ahead and put her in A tier, and I think, for the most part, that's where she deserves to go. Uh, but let me try and explain why, because, for one, I really don't think this is a bad character. I think this character is actually pretty damn good uh, for what she is. The only problem is she doesn't exactly have the arsenal, the kit, that, like, would, in my opinion, push her up to, like, S or God tier, especially not God tier. So, uh, for one, let's go ahead and go over, you know, what this character is actually meant to do. Uh, it is kind of obvious, and I have figured out, uh, that she is 100% meant to be just a tank, a big defense, bulky character in your party that's, you know, hopefully meant to take a few of those hits. I mean, for one, we can already see that her defense stat is 41, which is, you know, relatively high. It's obviously nothing like, um, I actually go ahead and pick, compare her to, uh, Diane. Uh, wherever she is. Here we go. I'll go ahead and compare her to Diane because they are relatively like the same character in terms of what they're meant to do. Like both of them are tanks. Uh, and as you can see, I put Diane in the god tier up here for her being a tank and uh, Eclair is down in the A tier. And let me try and explain why. So for one, Diane has 50% defense, which is insane. Uh, but at the same time, she also has this ability uh, which has a chance to take single target attacks from uh, you know, teammates and direct them to herself, which is incredibly good for a tank skill. Uh, and not only that, she has 
you know, a decent amount of skills that do different status effects. Like, for one, obviously, her first skill is a party buff, giving us defense. Uh, her second skill is a buff on herself, giving her attack and defense. And then her any plus three, if you get that, is an AoE debuff, lowering all the enemy's speed. So already, oh, and also all her magic spells are kind of the same, like, kind of the same as Eclair's, just giving everyone, uh, in general, status buffs, or, you know, debuffing the enemy a little bit. But in my opinion, Deanne is a way more versatile character because she has multiple different options. So for Eclair, you know, all you're really getting out of her is just a crap load of defense boosts, unless you do decide to go for all these magic spells, in which case you're getting a little bit of speed, a little bit of resistance. But for the most part, she doesn't have anything that's like especially, wow, you're giving everyone defense, but you're also giving them this. Uh, where Diane, you know, in my opinion, has that because she's giving everyone, you know, defense, resistance, she's giving herself, like, attack, defense, per whatever for one turn. She's a little bit more versatile, in my opinion, and also she tanks a lot better because of her ability. Uh, whereas Eclair isn't exactly that, but, you know, at the same time, I'm saying all this, I do want to put this umbrella out there again. I don't think Eclair is bad. I think, you know, if you don't have Diane or if you just don't have a good tank, Eclair is 100% a great option for you to tank, like, even possibly going into S tier. Uh, but another reason why I don't put her in S tier, and one of the big things that I don't know about this character, is I have no idea if her defense actually stacks. Because if it stacks, then I think easily Eclair goes into S tier. But if it doesn't, I think she's probably still just going to be A tier, maybe high B tier at most. Or at least. Um, but yeah, it kind of all falls onto that, because she's giving herself and the party a lot of defense. I mean, as you can see here, she's giving the party, as her any plus 3, 45% defense for two turns. Over here, she's giving herself 15. If you get down to, like, mastery 30, you're giving another 40 to 55% defense. And if that all can stack on top of each other, then, like, your party is just gonna be defensed out the wazoo. Like, you are, <laughs> you are gonna have a very hard time, uh, dying to most normal attacks. So that is kind of my thoughts on Eclair. I'm going to go ahead and keep her in A tier, um, but I do think she's a really good unit, especially if you don't have like a tank or if you don't have just like a, a basic, you know, support for defense on your team. I think she's a really good option. And finally, we have Overlord Prier. So Overlord Prier is a monster physical queen ally. Looking at her stats, we can see they are very befitting of an Overlord character. We have a high HP at 132. We have a really high attack at 49. We have a relatively high defense at 40. And then all the rest of her stats are just kind of mid, which, you know, we kind of expect because you can't have it all. Moving on to her attributes, we have 50% towards fire and minus 25% towards wind, which is a bit annoying, a bit unfortunate, I should say. Resistances, we have 50% towards Poison and Paralysis, 25% towards Sleep, and 75% towards Forget. Moving on to her abilities, we have her leader skill, Dark Holy Warrior. Physical, monster, weapon, wielding allies, attack, plus 25%. At any plus one, we have Fear Impact, self, skill damage dealt, plus 65% when two or less foes are present. At any plus five, we have Holy, Dark Holy Magic, uh, SP plus 35 at the start of battle when equipped with a monster physical weapon. And any plus seven, we have Seeking Strength. If unit has an attack buff at the start of the turn, you will get an attack buff of 65% for one turn. So, her abilities are looking pretty good, if I do say it so myself. They're a little bit self-centered, and what I mean by that is she only has one ability, which is her leader skill, that's actually buffing the whole team, uh, and the, for the rest of her skills, they're just all buffing herself. But honestly, I can't even be too mad, because for the most part, they're all really useful abilities. I mean, for this one, skill damage dealt plus 65% when two or less foes are present. I mean, this one, self SP plus 35. This one, if the unit has an attack buff, you're just giving yourself an attack buff right back at 65% for one turn, which I don't know if that can proc multiple times per battle, uh, but that is really helpful regardless. So, you know, overall, she's not doing a ton to actually help her team, but these abilities are still really, really good. And moving down to her skills, we get at level 1 Atomic Super Blast, an AoE attack, and also giving herself an attack boost per number of foes defeated by the skill by 5 times. At level 200, we get Holy Breaker, a single target attack, and also giving herself an attack buff of 45% and plus 100 on the gauge. And then at any plus 3, we get Requiem Aeternum Fin, which is going to be an AoE attack that gets stronger when there are less enemies uh, that's actually hitting. So, again, really just not bad, giving yourself a little bit more attack buff, so you are going to be hitting just crazy hard the longer you stay in battle, basically. And uh, all in all, not bad. For the most part, they are very similar 
uh, to what regular Prayer had if I actually go ahead and pull her up. I mean, I think they have pretty much like the same first skill where she's giving herself an attack buff uh, per the number of foes defeated by that um, that attack. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, yeah, it's this one right here. So attack plus a number of enemy characters defeated. Uh, the only difference really it looks like is the any plus three and also the uh, this one where instead of um, Prier lowering the enemy's attack and defense, Overlord Prier is actually just giving herself an attack buff instead of actually lowering it. And then finally, looking at her magic spells, we just get a whole bunch of ally buffs giving us attack, speed, and defense, which is pretty helpful. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. I, yet again, am real distraught about where to put her in the tier list. I, I mean, obviously she's not going like B, C, D, not even A. I'm kind of just torn between actual god tier and S tier. And the reason is, I think... For a lot of, you know, what Overlord Prier has, regular Prier has almost just as much, if not better, or the same. I mean, like, if we go ahead and take another look at Prier, uh, as we can see, obviously her attack is not going to be on par with Overlord Prier, but at the same time, it's only, like, what, four points, it's only four points lower? And also, looking at Overlord Prier's skills, I mean, we can see they're doing just slightly kind of more... Uh, broad skills like instead of only giving yourself like an attack buff and stuff this time you're doing a single target attack and then lowering the enemy's attack and defense by 50% for two turns I mean for the rest of them they're kind of the same like this one is just you know giving herself a buff per number of characters defeated this one giving herself a buff but also canceling the buff on the enemy which is incredibly helpful especially for what this character was mainly made for which i still assume to be raids she's more of a raid character slash just big damage dealer whereas overlord pair doesn't really have any of that she just for the most part has just a, a crap load of self buffs giving herself like insane amounts of attack which i also will say again if this stacks then she's just like an unstoppable unit because she's giving herself so ungodly like many buffs like even from her like skills like here she's giving herself more damage dealt by skills she's giving herself ah, i can't speak she's giving herself like an attack of 65 percent if the enemy has an attack buff and then down here we're giving herself more buffs just for killing enemies so if this all stacks then she is just like straight up unstoppable as an attacking unit but you know at the same time i still think regular prayer has just as much going for her and for that reason I am going to put Overlord Prayer in God tier still, yeah. I'm definitely not going to put her in S tier because she definitely deserves to be in God tier, in my opinion at least. I mean, her attacks, her stats, they're still like very, very good. Even if you compare them to someone like Meliodas, like Meliodas here has, you know, very high attack stat. He has like, yeah, 51, which is I think two, yeah, two more points than Overlord Prayer. Uh, but at the same time, he's not doing... Not, I don't want to say he's not doing as much, uh, because he's definitely going to be hitting a little harder just based on the attack stat, um, but at the same time, he's not giving himself the crazy amount of buffs uh, that Overlord Pierre is doing for pretty much every move she has. I mean, here, as we can see, he's giving himself a little bit of a 5% attack buff, he's giving himself maybe a 30% attack buff. Uh, here, you know, the less HP remaining, the more powerful a hit becomes if you get to any plus 3. And then for the magic spells, they're all pretty much the same. But for where Overlord Pierre shines a little bit better than Meliodas is just the sheer amount of attack buffs that she actually does give herself. So I think they are probably pretty even units if you compare them to each other. Uh, and for that reason, I definitely think Overlord Pierre deserves to be in the S tier. Uh, but with that being said, obviously, please let me know what you guys think. Because these units are a little bit hard to pinpoint just because they're kind of so similar to other units. Uh, but I still do think they are both very, very good units. So... Let me know what you think in the comments. And with that being said, that is going to be all for today. So like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you really liked it. Thanks for watching. And again, I know I just said this like three times, but let me know in the comments what you actually think. If you think Overlord Prayer deserves to actually be up here in God tier, maybe if you think regular prayer should go down into like S tier or something, or even if you think like a Claire is just complete dog water and deserves to go all the way down here to E or F tier, or, you know, if you think a Claire is insane uh, and she deserves to be in like S or God tier. Let me know, obviously all this is subject to change because this is just kind of me rambling on while I look at the character descriptions. So yeah, with that being said, let me know, and again, like the video, subscribe, do all that stuff. Hopefully this helps, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.
Okay, I, I just realized I forgot to actually fulfill the kind of whole purpose of this video, which is telling you if you actually should summon on these characters or not. Um, and much like most of my other suggestions, it honestly kind of comes down to just what you want to do and your team comp. Because, you know, if, for instance, you were going to summon for Eclair, Eclair looks to be a really good defense unit, really good, you know, tank, really good somewhat support, giving a little bit of defense boost to everyone else. But at the same time, if you don't need a tank, maybe if you already have like Deanne or something, then I would recommend maybe you don't really need to summon on her. But again, if you do want like just another a tank, because again, having more characters is going to be helpful than having less characters. Or, or even if she like, if she uh, stacks her defense boost, which again, I don't know if she does. If she does, that makes her like insane. Uh, if you just want a character like that, then go ahead and summon. Uh, but if you don't need a character, maybe you already have enough tanks on your team, then you don't really need to. And it's the similar thing with Overlord Prayer here. Even Prayer, like regular Prayer. If you already have, like, maybe some of these units, like Rosalind, uh, Velva Torres, like this, this girl and this guy that I forgot their names, you don't really need, necessarily need, a super strong, like, attacking unit. But at the same time, they do do really helpful things like attack boost, lowering the enemy's attack and defense, stuff like that. So they are still going to be really helpful. I think in general, like always just having a really strong attacking unit is going to be beneficial. So if you want to summon on them just maybe as a backup or if you actually need them for your team, I still think they are incredibly great options. So yeah, it's just kind of my two cents. Uh, but again, let me know what you think in the comments, like subscribe, all that stuff and peace.